Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my updated Venti guide. In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about Venti regarding how to build and play him efficiently. Since Venti is getting a rerun and since he also got buffed in patch 1.6 since my last Venti video with the buffs to the swirl reaction, I believe it is a good time to make an updated guide. I'm going to be covering the frequently asked questions regarding how to build Venti and if going for an elemental mastery or a crit focused build is better, as well as his playstyles, team comps, weapon ranking, and just everything that you need to know about this character. As always, before we begin i want you guys to know that i do stream most nights on twitch link in the description if you're interested as i will be testing ayato live tonight and with that being said let's get into it all right so the first thing we're going to do in this section is talk about venti as a character his abilities and his playstyle, and how you can get the most value out of this character the first thing i want to say is that his abilities are pretty straightforward while there's some advanced tips that i'll cover you can get a lot of value from this character by just pressing his skill and then using his burst the way his skill works is it'll do damage in front of you a decent amount of aoe damage that has a pretty high scaling the cooldown when you press this ability is quite low, which means you can spam it pretty often to get, as I said, good damage, but also and especially a nice amount of energy. Pressing this ability will generate three particles, which makes it pretty efficient. Now with that said, this ability can also be held, but I don't really recommend doing this. While holding this ability gives it more damage, four particles instead of three, and also generates a wind current that you can glide with, it's much less efficient in combat and should only be used for like exploration. In general, you're just going to press this ability as the cooldown's lower and it's just more efficient. For your elemental burst, this is the main reason why you're going to be using venti this ability is insane especially against small enemies that can be displaced as it will pull them all together groove them all up lift them in the air and deal massive amounts of damage his burst can be infused with an element if it comes into contact with it so either if you apply the element before or after like during his burst it will infuse and deal even more damage making it a very powerful ability the scaling on this thing is really nice given how many times it deals damage how long it stays out for which is eight seconds constantly swirling and constantly hitting the opponents. On top of that, Venti's burst also swirls a bunch, so not only is this damage doing a lot, like the damage over time and the additional elemental damage, but you're also getting a ton of instances of swirl. In fact, during your burst, you can swirl enemies a total of 14 times. It's actually 7 per enemy, but if you swirl more than one enemy, you will actually start double swirling. It is a mechanic unique to swirl, where if you're swirling more than one enemy at a time, they will basically just take double damage. This burst is absolutely insane, but it doesn't work on every enemy. It is, in my opinion, the best grouping ability and best like just supportive ability in general against specific enemies that it works against being anything that can be displaced with this ability bosses or just large enemies or certain enemies that are immune to getting sucked in like spectres for example are where venti shines less whereas for most other enemies the smaller ones or more common enemies if you will venti can displace with ease group up and just destroy because of that the strength of this ability varies based on what you're fighting but even if you can't lift up the enemies the damage that this ability deals just by it being on them is still relevant and better than a lot of people give it credit for. This burst has a cooldown of 15 seconds, but as I said, it lasts for 8, so a pretty good uptime with an energy cost of 60. With that said, when you use your burst, you actually gain 15 energy back through one of your passive talents, so this energy cost is actually lower than it seems. Another thing to note regarding Venti's elemental burst is that in order for it to suck enemies efficiently, to group them up very well, you want to be within 20 levels of the opponents you're fighting. Because of that, you want your Venti to be at least level 80, since the highest level enemies in the game that are in the floor 12 of the spiral abyss are level 100. With that said though, I do highly recommend leveling your venti all the way up to 90 because swirl is a transformative reaction that scales on your elemental mastery but also your character's level and so if you're level 90 on venti you will deal significantly more damage than if you're lower level. Another piece of a bit more advanced information is that you can actually animation cancel your skill into your burst by just pressing your you know skill first and then using your burst immediately after. What this looks like is E and then Q instantly, and as you can see, it cancelled the animation and then the Animo particles flew to me during my uh, burst cast to where I already have some energy uh, refunded. Another thing to note is that Venti's burst does snapshot, which means any buffs you give it at the start will last for its entire duration. This is important to know if you're running Venti with someone like Bennett, as you want to try to use Bennett's burst before using Venti's. Also, before moving on, I do want to say that regarding Venti's power level, while you can see that his kit is extremely broken when it works, some enemies make his burst a bit worse and less needed. 
needed. With that said, he's a pretty good character in general and a good support to have, being the best in his niche, but not always the best option, as obviously he isn't as impactful against enemies that he can't displace. With that said, he still has some value since his scalings are high and he can run the Verdes Inventor set, which I'll talk about in a bit. But for more information, I will go more into detail on this in a video comparing Venti and Kazuha that should be out in a few days once the Abyss resets. I'm waiting on that because I think the new Floor 12 might favor Venti and make him much, much better for the current endgame content, but it obviously isn't out yet. Lastly, for Venti's talent priority, you want to level his burst first as that's a big source of your damage and then your elemental skill after. Do keep in mind though that your skill does have a pretty good scaling as well on a low cooldown, so don't neglect leveling this talent. Now moving on, let's talk about how to build Venti. The first thing I want to cover is regarding the strength of building him Elemental Mastery versus going for a more crit focused build. I get this question a lot regarding which one's better, and so I want to cover that in this video. While the answer can depend on many factors, in general, Elemental Mastery is the more universal answer. Going Elemental Mastery on your Venti is really good, especially against a lot of enemies, or at least two enemies when you can double swirl them, which I explained earlier in the video, as building Elemental Mastery increases your swirl damage and Venti swirls a lot. This is therefore going to be the best option for most players, and I really mean most players, because going crit and going for a more attack and crit centered build only becomes better at really high investment. While the exact breakpoint can vary based on your weapon and team comp, what buffs you're running, in general you need around 30 perfect substats invested into like crit or attack percent to make that offensive crit build better than elemental mastery. Since that is such high investment and so unrealistic for a lot of the player base, and even then it's only slightly better, going elemental mastery is typically what I recommend. Obviously though, this depends on substats and what you have, and for someone like me who's been farming Verdes and Venerer for so long, I can honestly go both builds, and so I will cover in pretty great detail both of these builds in this video. With that said, let's start talking about more specifics. First of all, before I go into the main stats and substats you're looking for for each type of build, I want to start by just generally speaking about which artifact sets you want, as this is important and vital for your overall damage. And so obviously, I do have to talk about the four-piece Verdes and Venerer set. This is a set that I've covered many times on this channel, so I'm sure you already know why it's good, but for Venti in particular, this set is absolutely amazing. Not only is it good on all Enemo supports, because it decreases the resistance of whatever you swirl by 40% for 10 seconds, which just buffs your team and is especially nice when paired with an elemental DPS. On top of that though, this set also increases your Venti's personal damage by a really big amount, making it the best set for him personally, even without really considering the fact that it's also an amazing supportive set. This is because the 2-piece gives you 15% Enemo damage bonus, and the first part of the 4-piece set's effect increases your Venti's swirl damage by 60%. This 60% increase is absolutely huge, given how much your Venti swirls. When you combine that with the Enemo damage bonus that it gives you, and the resistance shred that it also provides you with, this set is the best in slot for Venti, and the only set that I really recommend everyone run on this character. With that said, there are alternatives in case you don't have a 4-piece Verdes Inventor, like running the 2-piece Wanderer's Troop, and potentially even the 2-piece Instructor, although that is a 4-star set, but assuming you just run it on your Flower and Feather, running both of these 2-pieces together can be a nice low investment way to just get a free 160 Elemental Mastery. This does get a lot worse at high investment though, especially when you start factoring in that you can also buff your team with the Verdes Inventor set, but it is a viable option. For a crit Venti build, 2-piece Noblesse Oblige gives you 20% burst damage, which is okay for your Venti's personal damage if you don't need to buff your team. With that said though, if you can, just go for this Verdes Inventor set. Now moving on, let's cover what artifact stats you want on your Venti. The first thing I want to address is regarding the energy recharge that this character wants. Something I've noticed and I covered even in my last Venti video was that a lot of people tend to stack way too much energy recharge on this character. Since his burst only costs 60 energy and you get some refunded with your passive talent as well as being able to use a skill uh, before your burst and animation cancel it in the way that I showed earlier, you honestly don't need that much energy recharge on top of the fact that you gain energy recharge from your ascension stat. I don't really know how to show this in game, but basically Venti gains 132% energy recharge. He has this amount for free when you ascend him past level 80. As you can see, I have literally zero energy recharge on this build just to show this off. And so generally speaking, it's not that hard to get enough energy recharge on Venti. And while it varies from player to player and depending on your team, in general, I recommend around 150 ER on Venti, like 150 to 160 as a good amount of energy recharge to have. This is therefore something that you can get just off your substats alone, since you already have a lot from your ascension passive. I do know that some Ventis who don't use their skill much will need a much higher energy recharge amount, but I believe that as long as you're using your skill like two times in a rotation, which is normal and realistic, you will not need that much energy recharge. Now with that out of the way, what are the stats you're looking for? For an Elemental Mastery Venti build, which is what I recommend for most people, you obviously want Elemental Mastery as your main priority. This is therefore what you're going to get 
get on your sands, your goblet, and your circlet. With that said, if you don't have enough energy recharge, it can be a viable option on your sands. Like you can still go for an energy recharge sands if you don't have enough, but I do much prefer elemental mastery. On top of that, another exception is that since it's difficult to get elemental mastery main stats, you can use other viable alternatives like an attack sands or an anemo damage goblet, but elemental mastery will generally be better. Moving on for a crit venti build, which as I said, I recommend at a higher investment, you can go for attack percent on your sands, a nemo damage bonus on your goblet, as this will greatly increase the damage of your burst, and also obviously your skill. And then lastly, you'll go for a either crit rate or a crit damage circlet based on whatever you need more of. And for your substats for both builds, you basically are just copying what you're building on your main stats. And so the elemental mastery build obviously wants EM, whereas the crit build can go for more crit and attack percent on the substats, with elemental mastery still being a nice substat to have. Moving on, let's now get into Venti's weapons. This section uh, gets a bit complicated when we go into the specifics, but a good general rule for a lot of players is to just use the stringless if you have it. While there's other weapons that can situationally be better, stringless is an insane option both at refinement rank 5 but also even without refinements as it gives you a lot of elemental mastery and an amazing effect that increases your skill and burst damage. Because of that, this is just a good weapon regardless of how you build your venti. For more information, I'm going to split this section into two parts, covering both of venti's popular builds. For an elemental mastery venti, a refinement rank 5 stringless will give you the most damage overall. While this is especially true at refinement rank 5, even at R1, it is really high up in the DPS charts, which I will show an exact weapon ranking and the math done in this section, whereas it's also a weapon that gets better with refinement. And stringless overall is just a weapon that yes, gets better with refinement, but even without it is still really good because of the high elemental mastery that it provides you with on top of an amazing effect. The other main contender for best supportive weapon is the Elegy for the End, which gives your Venti a more supportive role. While this usually won't be as much damage as a stringless for you, especially if you have it refined, it not only gives you a powerful effect that buffs your team, but also energy recharge. While I don't think you need too much ER on Venti, as I covered earlier, the effect can be quite nice. Now, the effect itself does have some negative synergy with Venti, given the 20 second cooldown on the buff and the way you generate the stacks, but in general, giving your Venti some elemental mastery, as well as buffing your team, giving them EM and attack percent if they need it, can make it the best option for your Venti. Despite losing a little bit of personal damage, the buff to your team can be worth it. And I do want to make sure I adequately emphasize that I think this bow is generally best in slot for your overall team's damage, so use it if you have it. For other weapons you can use for an EM build, if you still have the Windbloom's Ode, which you could refine for free and got for free during an event, it is definitely your best free-to-play option and comparable to a refinement rank 1 stringless. Very similar in DPS and very good overall. Other good options include the Alley Hunter, especially with refinement, and also for a free-to-play option, the Raven's Bow, which you can obviously just get to refinement rank 5, since it is a 3-star weapon. Lastly, if your team needs energy, Favonius Warbow is viable, but again, I would mainly use this for the energy that it gives your entire team, since this weapon gives you over 60% energy recharge at level 90, which is generally overkill for your Venti. The effect can be nice though, so it is a viable option, but it won't give you as much damage as the EM options that I mentioned earlier. Moving on for a crit Venti build, things get a bit trickier. In general, I still recommend Stringless because a Stringless, first of all, Stringless at R5 is your best in slot, doing better than the five star bows that I didn't even mention yet because of the insane effect and also elemental mastery still being nice. Stringless at R1 though is still a really good option, but can get outshined at higher investment by some of the five star weapons if you do have them. This is especially true if you're running Bennett, who will give you a lot of attack percent. And in this crit build, the Thundering Pulse and also Skyward Harp and the Polar Star as well are all really amazing options and typically the best ones to go for if you don't have an R5 stringless. This is because all three of these bows give you either a ton of crit rate or a ton of crit damage, or both with the Skyward Harp, and the sheer amount of stats that they give you make them really powerful options for a crit venti. If you don't have any of the options I mentioned, other good ones include the Windbloom's Ode still, the Alley Hunter, especially with refinement, the Moon's Moon for just a a ton of attack and also increasing your burst damage. The Viridescent Hunt can also be a good option, especially if you can utilize the passive. That does group up enemies, but also just because it gives you a nice amount of crit rate. Lastly, if you don't have any of those options for crit venti, you can use a free-to-play option like the Prototype Crescent, although your damage will be lower, and at that point, I would just recommend running Elemental Mastery Venti. With that said, I'm now going to put the weapon ranking on screen. This might get confusing. I know there's a lot, and this does depend on a lot of factors, but it can just help give you guys a general idea of what to expect for venti. Overall, he has a lot of really good options and I just recommend going for a stringless if you have it especially R5 for an elemental mastery build but also a crit build or the elegy for the end bow for a more supportive play style. Five star weapons are also very good for a crit build and the Windbloom's Ode is good overall especially for an EM venti so there's many options
options for every type of player. Now moving on to quickly cover Venti's constellations, as with many other characters, he is one who does not depend on them, and who is really powerful even at C0. I will say that for Venti in particular, I'm not as big of a fan of Venti's constellations and don't recommend them as much as some other characters, but I will still cover them nonetheless. With that said, there are a few that can improve the Animo damage of your team, which can be nice if it's what you're going for. To go into more detail, your C1 is useless, it just buffs your aim shots, and I don't know why I have this. Your C2 decreases the Animo resistance and physical resistance of enemies when you use your elemental skill. This can therefore be nice for buffing your overall team's Animo and physical damage, but is really not that big of a deal for a second constellation. It can be nice in a Shao team and to improve your Venti's personal Animo damage, but isn't the biggest deal. Your C3 and 5 increase your talent levels, which again, more damage, mainly for your crit build where you're focusing on your scalings, and then your C4 also will do a similar thing, increasing your Venti's Animo damage just overall. This happens when he picks up an elemental orb or particle, giving him a 25% Animo damage bonus for 10 seconds, which is nice but not needed. Lastly, your C6 is another buff by decreasing the Animo resistance of opponents and also reducing the resistance of whatever element you swirl. This therefore buffs not only his damage, but also his supportive capabilities, decreasing the resistance of whatever is in your burst. Now, there are two really important things I want to say. Number one, as you can see, a lot of his constellations will either increase his Animo damage, so especially if you're going the crit build and capitalizing on that, or buffing your team's damage with something like your C2 or C6. With that said though, and this is the most important thing, in places where Venti works really well, where his burst already groups everything and starts dealing damage to everything, he's already such a good unit and like probably the most broken unit for that type of content that any further constellation, while it will improve your performance and your damage, is not needed by any means. And so overall, compared to other characters, I don't really like Venti's constellations, but his C2 and 6 can have a supportive role. Now with all that being said, let's talk about Venti's teams. I do want to start this section by saying that Venti as an Anemo support is a very flexible unit who can fit many teams that just want that Anemo support. While he won't give you elemental damage like Kazuo will, or elemental mastery like Sucrose will, he is undoubtedly the best at grouping enemies that he can display, so smaller enemies that are in many different pieces of content and potentially in the next floor 12, and so you can therefore fit him in pretty much any team that wants that, any team that wants an Animo support, and to also provide the Viridescent Venerer team buff, is a team where you can fit Venti in. This is especially true for elemental teams that the Viridescent set can buff, but also just true in general for teams that want enemies grouped. With that said, there are some team comps where Venti shines the most, and characters that he synergizes very well with, so I will cover that in this section. First of all, for freeze teams, Venti can be really nice. Freeze teams typically want an Animo support, and Venti is not only that, but also the premier option with a character like Ganyu. While it does depend on what you're fighting, running Ganyu with Venti and a Hydra support is an exceptionally powerful team as you can permanently freeze enemies and obliterate anything that can be frozen. While this team can work even in places where Venti can't displace enemies too efficiently, against large hordes of enemies, this team is honestly one of if not just the best in the game. This is because Ganyu's burst summons icicles for the enemies you're fighting, it summons them on every enemy, while Venti can group them up and then you can use a Hydra support, someone like Mona, to not only buff your team's damage through her omen, but also apply hydro, permanently freeze enemies, and just honestly one-shot everything. On top of that, what this team has going for it is that there's many variations, there's a lot of different freeze teams you can run with Venti, and a lot of different Ganyu Venti teams with different hydro options, and also the last slot being a pretty flexible cryo character. This team also doesn't really need a healer, since you are freezing enemies, and can therefore avoid damage, but having a healer can be nice for convenience. Other than just that, Venti can fit many quick swap teams, I personally like running him, even with Kazuo, as Kazuo, Bennett, and Venti can honestly just do a bunch of Pyro Swirls together and really just carry any team. The last character here is obviously flexible, but adding Shangling can make for a powerful Mono Pyro team, with Kazuo and Venti honestly just doing insane amounts of Swirl damage. With that said though, there's so many different teams where honestly Venti can be played, even in a Shao team, and while I personally prefer Sucrose for the Thrilling Tales buff she gives, Venti still gives you a lot of particles and really good damage against enemies that can be grouped, although lifting enemies in the air isn't the best for Shao as he can't plunge them, it can be nice against your downtime or against some larger enemies that Shao can still hit, and Venti also makes up for it because of just how strong he can be. In general though, like even if he can have like no synergy with your team, the fact that he can group up enemies and buff your elemental damage makes him a very universal and strong option if you need someone to group enemies. And overall, those are my thoughts on Venti and how to build this really powerful character whom I enjoy playing. Before I end this guide, there's a few important things I want to say. Regarding a Venti showcase, since he's mostly a support slash sub DPS, I've mainly just sprinkled clips 
of him throughout this video instead of doing a full showcase of this character. However, in a few days, I'm going to be releasing a Venti vs. Kazuha video where I showcase both characters and their power levels, but I am waiting for the new Abyss, as uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I do think that the Abyss will change in two days and be more Venti favored for his rerun. As you can see, uh, the Abyssal Moonspire resets in two days, so it is something that I'm looking forward to. Stay tuned for that video where I will give my thoughts about Venti's place in the meta and his overall power level. In general, though, I really like this character, and for me, he's a worthy pull to make a lot of annoying content with a lot of enemies much, much easier. I really hope this video was helpful and I covered everything you need to know about how to build this character. If there's anything I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment. And with that said, the maintenance is actually about to start, which is also partly why I can't record a showcase on top of just wanting to wait for the new Abyss. And so I'm going to go get ready for Ayato's release, which I will be streaming live on Twitch. Thanks for watching. I hope this got helped. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.